The red carpet was rolled out at the River Center Lagoon this morning for a breakfast and welcome address by the mayor. The print and broadcast reporters were then given a complete tour of SeaWorld with front row seats for all the shows. Approximately 500 media representatives, as I said earlier, will be in San Antonio this weekend. Not all of them are American journalists. I've had conversations with those from uh, London, from France. We've had them in here from Belgium, uh, England, um, Scotland. Grand opening ceremonies again start at 8.30 tomorrow morning with special events going on through Memorial Day. Well, will it rain on this weekend's grand opening? Bill Dante says, not a chance. We'll check. Kathy Teague explains. Shamu is not only making a big splash at SeaWorld, but causing a few waves of a different sort on the airwaves of Radio Jalapeno. <laughs> The song is called La Cumbia de Shamu, and it's sung by a local group, Brown Brandy. It's more jolly, you might say, more uh, danceable, and uh, it's got a, a good rhythm. I think the rhythm has a lot to do with it. San Antonio's team of conjunto music, Ka Edia, gave the song a chance and found it popular with everyone. Believe it or not, I get a lot of response from the people out in uh, Alamo Heights. I get calls from people from Alamo Heights that want to hear the song. Kathy Teague, KSA 12 News. I want to see the solid gold dancers get a hold of that one. <laughs> I like Shamu better. Have a great weekend. Yeah. See you back here Monday. The Great Debate of 88 is sponsored in part by the Campbell Soup Company, makers of quality products for over 100 years. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Travelina. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening and welcome. Tonight, I am honored to have with me the distinguished nominees. Excuse me, Fred, but uh, we're ready to go ahead now. <laughs> well, in a minute, Ted. I mean, first, I want to tell our audience. I'm sorry, but we just don't have time. <laughs> Look, pal, this is my show. That may be, Fred, but you're on my monitor, and I control the horizontal. Oh, hey, what are you... And I control the vertical. Ah, what are you... Come on, what are you doing? And I really enjoy doing it. <laughs> Goodbye, Fred. Hey, what, what's going on here? Ah, stop that out! Ow! Oh, stop! <laughs> Thank you, Fred. We're here with live coverage of the absolutely last chance final debate between presidential hopefuls George Bush and Michael Dukakis. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge As you can I see, pledge the candidates I are making their last minute preparations the and the tension is rising. States In a moment, of America. round I, one. I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag. Tuesday on the Family Channel movie. It was a mission only one man could handle. My idea is that you start finding another dirty dozen. There are 36 canisters in the cellar of the monastery. We're gonna blow them up and get out the six scientists they're holding as prisoners. Welcome to World War II. Telly Savalas, Ernest Borgnine, and Vince Edwards star in Dirty Dozen, The Deadly Mission, Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on the Family Channel movie. You don't need to see their kitchen to know they have KitchenAid. Now there's a complete line of KitchenAid premium appliances. KitchenAid, for the way it's made. 
A crunchy, delicious, plastic pickle will make your sandwich taste better. Even if it's not your sandwich. Crunchy, delicious, plastic pickles. As important to your sandwich as the bread. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat. Legendary Chevy Camaro. You've always hoped someday you could afford one. Welcome to Someday. The heartbeat of America. Vegetables yesterday, honey. No time. The American Dietetic Association says vegetables are an important part of a balanced diet. No salad. Too busy. When you can't get to eat vegetables, you can drink them. One delicious glass of V8 juice provides a serving of vegetables. Have a V8, honey. Forecast plenty of sunshine through today wow. and seasonal temperatures. It's straight to the office for me, hon. Good morning, George. Hey, Fred. No V8 today, huh? Drink V8. Keep your diet straight. Welcome back. Joining us now, our panel of political experts. First, from the Oval Office, President Ronald Reagan. When the moon is in the seventh house and Jupiter aligns with uh, Mars, uh, then peace will... Uh... Good evening, Mr. President, and uh, welcome to our panel. Oh, well, it's my pleasure, Ed. You know, Nancy and I never missed our search. Watching all those fine young people singing and dancing. Excuse me, Mr. Reagan. My name is Ted, not Ed, and this is the final showdown between Michael Dukakis and George Bush. Oh, well, now, George dances okay, but he couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. <laughs> well, this is strictly a debate, sir. There is no talent competition. Now, that's different. As long as there's no talent involved, George might win. And if he doesn't? Well, whoever wins this debate between Mr. Bosch and... Uh... Mr. Bush, sir, that's Mr. Bush. All right. This debate between Mr. Bush and Mr. Bosch. Nancy and I are all packed. And come Wednesday morning, we're blowing this pop stand. But, Mr. President, your term doesn't expire after the election. It doesn't? No, you're still in office until January 20th. Well, now, that just doesn't make any sense at all. The country's elected a new president. What do they need me for? It's in the Constitution. It is? Well, who can read all that small print? Sometimes I think the Constitution was written by a bunch of uh, Philadelphia lawyers. But, sir, it was. Well, there you have it. Let's move on to our second analyst from the Soviet Union, General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev. Good evening, Mr. Gorbachev. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, from your international perspective, uh, how would you rate the candidates? <laughs> <laughs> now let's turn to our third guest from our studios in Chicago, the Reverend Jesse Jackson. Good evening, Ted. Forgive me for asking, Reverend, but are you still angry about not being picked for vice president? I'm not mad that the man didn't have the decency to pick up the phone and tell me himself, I'm not mad, I am not mad. But you still think you're the best candidate. Let me just put it this way, Ted. What America needs today is a man who believes in human rights, not military might. 
in justice and clarity, not missiles and parity, in freedoms and jobs, not shish kebab. Well, that's all very interesting, Reverend Jackson, but... It's time for everybody to stand up and say, I am somebody. Say it loud, say it proud. Come on, Ted, say it. I am somebody. I am somebody. Louder, Ted, say, I am somebody. I am somebody. Come on, say it. I, I am, am somebody. somebody. I, I am, am somebody. somebody. I am somebody. I am somebody. It broke to Tatsuka. 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 Gentlemen, 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 please. We'll get back to our panel later. Right now, it looks like we're ready to begin, so we'll go to our distinguished moderator of tonight's debate, Richard Nixon. Good evening, my fellow Americans. Tonight, it is my privilege, you might even say my executive privilege, to moderate this debate in a spirit of even-handed impartiality. There'll be no hanky-panky, and that applies equally to both candidates the incumbent vice president of the United States and the little liberal jerk from Massachusetts. <laughs> Zip it up, pipsqueak. You'll get your chance. Let the uh, better man go first. <laughs> That's you, George. <laughs> oh, uh, thank you, Dan. Tonight, I will not resort to petty slurs and mudslinging and I hope this holds true for my distinguished opponent, a man who could walk comfortably under a card table without taking off his hat. I agree with my worthy adversary, a man who followed in the footsteps of his hero, uh, Ronald Reagan, by picking a, uh, a dodo for his running mate. I'm here to discuss the issues cutting through the empty posturing and cheap theatrics. Well, I'm delighted to hear that, George. I so pledge far allegiance campaign, to the flag of the United States a meaningful of America dialogue. and to the republic for which it stands. Poor George. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Michael. I, I just love that pledge so much. Did you uh, teach it to Noriega, George? Uh, how about the Ayatollah? Don't worry about the Ayatollah. I can communicate with those people. Listen. Great, George. Next time you rent to Rand, maybe you can show them this calendar I had made for you. In case you forget, September 7th is marked not Pearl Harbor Day. Did you declare that with Jesse, little guy? You get permission from old J.J. to say that. Mike Dukakis is the kind of American who does his own thinking, George. A man whose father came over to this great country with Nothing but the uh, shirt on his back. Gee whiz, Mike, we're not gonna have to listen to that coming over on the boat stuff again, are we? You know, my family was poor once, too. When, George, the 12th century, you want to know who was poor? You're looking at him. I started out with nothing. Had to claw my way to the top, mostly over Bula Bula boys like you two. And I can win this time. I know all the tricks. I'm tanned, I'm rested, uh, I've got spin doctors. That's not what this campaign is all about, Dick. Political sabotage, dirty tricks. Uh... I resent my opponent's innuendos about CIA. I would never do anything of an underhanded nature. Interesting shot, huh? <laughs> would never shift attention to George's cozy relationship with a certain uh, Panamanian pill pusher. <laughs> Remind you of uh, anyone, George? <laughs> Let's see how our panel of judges rates the debate so far. Gentlemen, uh, who's ahead and by how much? <laughs> Throwing out the high and low score, the surprise leader so far is Jesse Jackson. And now, back to the debate. What are you going to do next for the environment, George? Make a rug out of uh, Smokey the Bear? I was up in Boston the other day. <laughs> 
I saw a little kid passing an overflowing garbage can, and he said, surf's up. <laughs> Let's forget the cute one-liners and get to the issues, George. Let's leave aside the invisible vice president's image, the cast no shadows put-downs, the uh, no fingerprint stuff. All contraire, Mike. George Bush is always out there. My visibility on tough issues speaks for itself. Unlike your flip-flops on SDI. What, what flip-flops? I, I support it. it. You think that's tough? 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 They call me the Duke because I remind people of John Wayne. Michael, I met John Wayne. I knew John Wayne. I have a pair of John Wayne jammies. And, Governor, you're no John Wayne. Okay, you asked for it, George. I'm going to do my John Wayne impression. All right, pilgrims, uh, let's get those wagons in a circle. Can you believe that little ACLU card carrier doing you? Shield your eyes, John. Shield your eyes. You want to talk initials, George? Q-U-A-Y-L-E. Oh, yeah? N-R-A. C-I-A. R-S-V-P. When? Wednesday. Cocktails. Sushi? My place. Done. Gentlemen, please. This is a debate. Let's stick to the name calling. I can do that. I can do it because I'm a uh, regular guy. I'm an ordinary American, George. Uh, Want to see my snowblower? Oh, yeah? Well, I can be just as ordinary as you, little guy. And I have a plan that the ordinary man understands. My thousand points of light. You can't be any clearer than that. Hey, what are you doing? I, uh, just trying to think of one thing you actually accomplished while serving as President Reagan's lapdog. There you go again, trying to tear down the president. I remember now you uh, went to a lot of funerals. Wasn't your slogan, they die, I fly? For eight years, I was one heartbeat away, always at the ready, waiting to take over with my thousand points of light. That's doing something. Give me your tires, your floor, your head masses, you're in to brief three. I pledge to to the flag of the United Homeless States Tempest of me. America. I lift my lamp. And we'll be back the with the rest of tonight's debate after these important messages. I pledge George, what are you talking about? Even I don't know what a thousand points of life is. Thank you, sir. You are sure. And to the Republic of the The Great Debate of 88 is sponsored in part by the Campbell Soup Company, makers of quality products for over a hundred years. The Family Channel Movie Preview with Dean Jones. Hi. Over the years, I've been in many of the popular Disney movies, which have become synonymous with quality family entertainment. Now it's my pleasure to bring you a monthly update on films to watch on the Family Channel Movie. November's going to be a great month for movies on the Family Channel. So let's take a quick cruise through the schedule and tour the town that made movies famous. Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis are teamed up in Jumping Jacks, created by Paramount Studios. They also produced Off Limits with Bob Hope and the great Mickey Rooney. Jack and Harry Warner gave us the Frank Capra film, Meet John Doe, which stars Gary Cooper. Mr. Belvedere Goes to College, made for each other with Jimmy Stewart. And the classic of all classic Frank Capra films, it's a Wonderful Life. And a two-hour special on the royal couple, Charles and Diana, a great family movie. Watch for them all through November on the Family Channel movies. When you get a head cold, your head's in a fog. You sneeze, your nose runs. You get all stuffed up, you can't breathe. That's why there's Actifed, the head cold medicine, with an antihistamine to help stop your runny nose and sneezing, and the nasal decongestion most recommended by doctors to help clear up your stuffy head. So when a head cold comes over you, get Actifed. It lifts the fog of a head cold.
Oh, you're, you're home early, huh? Men can be so stupid. Yeah, yeah. Well, say, how about some Camel's home cooking soup? Grandpa, chicken soup can't fix everything. No, you got to have some tomatoes and celery and carrots, too. You know, honey, your grandmother never, ever called me stupid. No, she always called me pinhead. Oh, Grandpa. I knew some soup would make you feel better. Home cooking soups from Campbell. They got their name because of their taste. Welcome back. We've invited a focus group of ordinary citizens to comment on the debate. And to make sure they'll be completely candid, we're going to protect their identities. Our moderator, former President Nixon, will conduct the discussion. Thank you, Ted. <laughs> oh, and by the way, I think Nightline is a terrific show. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Nixon. Uh, you know what? I have a book out. I'd be happy to come on the show and just, you know. Well, I'm afraid we're all books, sir. Well, of course, you're no Martin Downey Jr., that's for sure. <laughs> but we're not here to discuss you and your lousy show, Ted. <laughs> Let's get to the group. <laughs> now, Mr. K, you're from uh, Topeka, Kansas. Uh, how do you think the candidates stack up so far? Well, first of all, <clears throat> you have to understand it's not the president. Yeah, but the Secretary of State, who must be experienced. <clears throat> you have a very familiar...